Number 74 At the Harbour Foreigners brought him to our tiny harbour Name of Emis, twenty-eight years old. He'd left his country to learn the incense trade, took sick on the water, died when he disembarked at this god-forsaken Syrian anchorage miles from anywhere, a sullen coast whispering of his home and aged parents. We placed him in a pauper's grave. No one had heard of his people. We did not know from which of the many scattered Greek townships he had come, travelling here to Syria to die. It's just as well. With us he is at peace, at home in our tiny harbour. His ungrieved parents fondly imagining their son still lives. Seventy-five. Body, remember. I do not alone recall erotic encounters, body to body on a rumpled bed, actual physical concourse of the flesh, Precious to the remembering mind, those rarefied conjunctions, eyes that stared in instant passion, voices breaking mid-sentence, leading to no seminal conclusion. Both recollections empowering each fulfilling, consummation equally achieved in physical contact and platonic junction, eyes and voice alone, glances as passionate kisses, the accentual caress. Seventy six Tomb of Lanes Marcus, you will not find him here, your much loved Lanes. This tomb is empty of the being you adored. The hours you spent here, the tears you shed, are wasted. You know where you will find him, where memory can feed and loss be calmed. You have his living portrait in your house. There his precious lineaments preserved retain the presence of the man you loved, enshrining, not entombing his breathing spirit. Remember when you fetched from the consulate that famed Kyrenian artist who, when he viewed your Lani's then alive, insisted he be shown as Hyakinthos, thinking to broaden the appeal of his own art. This Lanis refused and ordered the Kyrenian not to portray him as Hyakinthos but as Lanis, son of Rametikos, 
of Alexandria. Seventy seven Nero's term. A young Nero is come to Delphi, ascends the gorge in splendour, bathes in the sacred spring, consults the oracle, of course. Danger, danger, age seventy three cries the pythoness in agony, rock face reverberating with the crazy sound. Nero's relieved. He's only thirty. Plenty of scope to outwit the approaching threat. Thus the pitfalls of egocentricity. He's tired now, time to return to Rome, wonderfully worn out from days of pleasure, lascivious, ni lascivious days, moon-fed nights, theatres, scented gardens, grottos, groves, one warm brown yielding body on a bed twilight hours in the sumptuous cities of Achaea, naked flesh, athletic bodies. Plenty of time, young Nero thinks, fresh-faced at only thirty, when he stops to think of the mad and staring pythoness thus the pitfalls of egocentricity. Meanwhile, power-hungry in far Spain, General Galba drills his private army. General Galba, aged seventy-three.